Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Tina Coleman and I'll be your host for this session. Welcome to CNA2MD. Today we're going to answer a question that we received from one of our viewers and they asked, how do you choose a nursing program? How do you choose what the best program for you is and um, how do you go about applying? So today we're going to focus on a few things in making this decision. The first thing is the cost. We all know that the cost of education in the U.S. is exorbitant. Prices keep going up. There are new programs uh, and diploma programs mushroom up. This university, that university, you can study from home, you can do it online, you can do this, you can do that. How do you know these programs are credible and how do you know if you're being robbed blind or if you're actually paying for a valuable education? So. On average in the U.S., if you were going to go for a four-year degree program at a state institution, you may pay between fifteen to $20,000 a year. This is without any scholarships or grants or anything to that effect. And when making these decisions, really, you're, you're considering a cost of education between sixty dollars to $80,000 if you do not get any kind of aid in terms of grants or loans or anything like that. So the first thing you have to decide is, number one, if you're going to apply for a nursing program, first consider programs that are in-state, so within your state itself. So if you've made a decision to become an RN, for example, and you, you know what you want to be in the next few years, you need to decide if you're going to become an RN with a diploma or certification, you need to decide if you're going to become an RNAD, which is an RN with an associate degree, or if you need to become an RNBSN, which is an RN with a Bachelor's of Science degree. So when you're considering all these facts, you look at programs in your area, and then based on costs, you start to weed them out and rank them out. I love a ranking system because it creates a, logic flow a logical flowchart on paper for you to go back and refer to, make notes, do your research online, talk to other students, and decide what the cost is. See how many students get grants and loans from the school. And so if a school costs $80,000, but for example, 80% of the students get financial aid in terms of grants or scholarships and that kind of stuff, you can see that you can offset the cost of that education and then you're not so tied in or so shy away or just, um, just pushed away by the cost of the, of the college on paper. So those are a few things to consider. Next, we're going to talk about the duration of the program. So if you're in an RN program, that's a diploma program, and it takes three years, it doesn't make a lot of sense to sign up for something like that if you have a public education or public uh, university around you that you can attend and just add an extra year and become a BSN. So people ask, does it make a difference if you have a BSN or an AD or a Justice Certificate program? In my opinion, it really does. It really does. As far as entry level jobs, it may not make a difference. So an RN is an RN. And if a hospital needs you at that time, they're going to hire who they can. But once you're in your nursing career for a few years and you get to the point where you're comfortable and you're trying to grow, you'll find out that people with bachelor's degrees in general tend to get the promotions, they get to be promoted to managers, they become supervisors, they become leaders in the workplace because there's just some skills that you acquire from a four-year college that a two-year college or diploma program really doesn't have the, the, the time or the resources to really focus on. For example, research, most uh, RN, BSN, programs will at least introduce nurses to nursing research so they get used to asking these clinical questions in the workplace and trying to tease out the answers which is really exciting and also talk about leaderships uh, our leadership skills are something that you really do not find in two-year or bi uh, baccalaureate or I'm sorry diploma RN programs so that's something for you to consider if you're going in this for the long haul for example if you're an 18 year old or 21 year old you're not married you don't have any children and all all you're trying to do is position yourself for a career in the future. I would advocate and strongly advocate a bachelor's degree program because in the long run, that's going to pay off. Secondly, you need to consider the RN uh, NCLEX pass rate for that school. So I always look at the previous four to five years. If people are scoring, only about 70% of the people are passing the test, uh, you need to reconsider that school. There's something seriously wrong with that school. They cannot uh, get people to pass above an 80 degree pass rate uh, for, their, for, their, for each year. So that's something that I really strongly advocate. Uh, if I were looking for a program, I would look for a program where the NCLEX pass rate was at least 80%. If you're in the 90s, 
now you're talking business. You know you're going to be well prepared and well positioned to pass. There's nothing more disheartening than finishing four years of education only to fail your licensing exam. And I am, I'm sure that there are a lot of nurses out there. I'm sure there are many people on YouTube that will even give you videos on how to overcome that. I had friends that did not succeed on their first try, and I can't tell you how disheartening it is to to watch them or ex have them experience that. It's it's a hard thing to come back from. Although multiple people put, multiple people do, and they go on to succeed second or third times. Next, we're going to talk about a support system. So if you are a 21-year-old or an 18-year-old and you're trying to go to college and you don't care, you just want to have a college experience and then come out with a degree where you can work and have a, a build a life for yourself later. I think that it's uh, an important thing to consider. You're free in the in sense where you're not tied down with responsibility and other people that you have to consider. If you're married with kids and you're trying to go to an area, you need to consider your support system. You know, how much is this going to cost in general? How much if you were working and you quit your job to become a, to, to go back to school? What is the loss of income for your family? And how are you guys going to, going to account for that? How are you guys going to fill in the gap? And then thirdly, you need to see if you have friends that are nurses or if you have family members and all those other things. So um, you need to really look at each specific detail and make the best decision for you. The last thing we're going to talk about is the 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 distraction factor so if you're if you're a partier you know and you're trying to go to nursing school well don't pick new york city and don't pick a party school no offense against new york i love new york but you know it there are a lot of distractions around and usually in our end school you're just trying to get or bsn school or nursing school in general you're just trying to buckle down study hard and just finish the process so i would advocate going to smaller schools where you're removed if you're single you, you can concentrate on your study just focus on work you know for a semester at a time bam 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 four years and you're out and then once you're out you can find a job in a in a state or in a city of your choosing I personally went to a very small school in Louisiana and uh, the cost of education there was very affordable I loved it I enjoyed it every single moment of it and once I got out I got a job of my choosing and I've never ever been turned out from a job or further education because of the school that I went to. I am, I am proud to say that going to, to go, I'm proud to say that going to smaller school, I got all the opportunities that people that go to bigger programs or bigger schools or more renowned schools are exposed to. So I had those same opportunities and I don't feel that in any way you're disadvantaged. So in summary, now, multiple things to consider when picking a school. The first one is the cost of the program. The second thing is the duration of the program. The third thing is the RN pass and RN NCLEX pass rate. The fourth thing is the support system that you may have in choosing this program. And the last thing, of course, is the distraction factor in the city or the state where your school is. I hope you found this video useful and I hope you um, get to put some of these uh, points that we discussed into practice and come up with a comprehensive list. Personally, I say a good list for a high school student or anyone really considering a nursing school is between um, eight to ten. So come now with a, a, come up with a list or write down a list of about eight to ten schools that you're seriously considering, and then look at those factors to kind of weed them out, move them to the top or to the bottom, and you can rank them according to your likes and dislikes. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Toodles.